The current uh, Ebola outbreak in Bulibungyo in Uganda seems to be caused by a, a new strain. And how do we know that? Actually, uh, samples have been analyzed in a laboratory in the United States and have shown that the uh, usual reagents that are used to characterize Ebola viruses uh, so far do not really uh, react with this uh, strain isolated in Budibungyo, uh, but nevertheless could confirm that it's an Ebola virus. Uh, what does it mean in terms of uh, patient care and uh, outbreak potential? It might be that this new strain might, could be a bit less uh, pathogenic or less lethal than the other ones, but it's too early to tell, and epidemiological studies uh, are ongoing to answer this question. Ebola hemorrhagic fever is uh, known since 1976, uh, and uh, traditionally it's characterized by bleeding, as its name implies. But uh, uh, in, in the biggest outbreaks that have been observed so far, hemorrhages account for only 40% of the symptoms. The disease progresses in about 10 days, and it starts with uh, very uh, non-specific symptoms that could be confused with, let's say, malaria, which is very frequent in this area. So patients start typically with headaches, tiredness, uh, body pain, and only uh, later will uh, symptoms that are much more characteristic of Ebola appear. It can be bleeding, it can be uh, some neurological symptoms, uh, a deep conjunctivitis, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, those are the main symptoms. I must say also that the uh, convalescence, the people who survive Ebola, uh, traditionally 10-20% uh, of the patient, keep being uh, ill for uh, a number of weeks uh, and present symptoms that uh, uh, testify to some immune recovery uh, of their body. There is no specific treatment against uh, Ebola viruses. Nevertheless, it's very important to uh, care uh, patients in uh, hospital settings. Uh, mortality can be a bit improved by some uh, symptomatic uh, treatments, but uh, mostly it's important to keep the patients in isolation so that they will not further transmit the disease to other people. Of course, once the, the uh, virus uh, makes its way in a, in a hospital, uh, the hospital becomes a very high-risk carrier for further transmission, especially among healthcare workers. So it's uh, also important to, uh, very early, as, as soon as the intervention starts, to give uh, protection to healthcare workers, protection and, uh, health and education about how to use the, the protective equipment, how to behave to, to minimize the risk of transmission, uh, typically by direct contact with infected patients where their body fluids with cadavers and also uh, mostly with sharp instruments that might be uh, left uh, in the isolation ward. It's also very important that uh, patients are attended properly uh, because in, in their communities the danger is felt to be so high that they would be uh, quickly ostracized and abandoned to their uh, fate. So uh, having a human presence to, next to the patient is extremely important to help them to die or survive with dignity. To the question on how to prevent uh, Ebola or other similar hemorrhagic fever, the first thing to know is that there is no uh, vaccine available and there is no uh, drug that can uh, help uh, decrease the transmission. So there are essentially two ways to decrease the transmission uh, and to, to have a better idea I need to, to explain a bit about what we know so far about Ebola transmission. It seems that the virus has a reservoir in some animal species in the deep forests of Africa. Uh, species that have been found so far are uh, bats and some uh, mammals, uh, other mammals. So classically, the uh, virus will jump from an animal species to uh, human beings on the occasion of uh, hunters handling uh, infected uh, primates or uh, uh, apes uh, or uh, handling uh, dead carcasses. 
And from then, since all this happened in remote areas, they will uh, probably uh, initiate a transmission cycle in their own setting, in their own villages. And since that happens in very remote areas that can last for weeks, if not months, uh, still being unnoticed. And it's from the day one of those unfortunate villagers finds his or her way into a hospital setting, another cycle of transmission, this time in, among health workers, will be initiated. And that's generally when the outbreak explodes and when it uh, comes uh, to be noticed to the international community. Since 1995, uh, Doctors Without Borders has acquired uh, a large experience in handling Embora outbreaks and uh, especially in the care of patients in isolation and the uh, um, control of transmission of the virus. The main part of our activities today is to uh, attend patients that are hospitalized in the isolation pavilion uh, and provide training to the local staff to help them work safely in this uh, environment. MSF uh, has been called very early in, during the outbreak and has essentially focused on the helping to stop the transmission in the uh, hospital of Budibungyo. But in parallel, we are also uh, assisting the authorities and other international teams in the identification of new patients uh, during a process of uh, epidemiologic uh, assessment trying to uh, visit the communities and uh, places where patients have been uh, located.